The British Empire. The British Empire. called the historical period of the United Kingdom between the 17th and 20th centuries. Was the second largest empire in history, and I dare say the most relevant due to the immense legacy it has left, and that has lived to this day. At its peak, it exceeded 33 million square kilometers and almost 460 million people, which represented at the time a quarter of the world's population. So how on earth did the kingdom of a small island in the North Atlantic come to write such a feat for history? Do you want to know? Then stay until the end of the video. As always, let's broadly look at the background of this period. These are the British Isles, if you have any doubts about concepts, I suggest you watch this video before continuing. In this, the Kingdom of England would be formed in the 10th century AD, which remained a country in constant conflict with its Nordic neighbours, Scots and Celts. Despite this, thanks to its privileged insular position, it remained oblivious to many conflicts that occurred over the following centuries on the European mainland. In the end, the point is that the first ruler who would lay the foundations for this small nation to become a future power would be Henry VIII, who ruled from the beginning of the 16th century. His imperialist desires led him to modernize the British Navy by building several docks and turning it into the first fleet with artillery on board. At the same time, great expeditions began. In this way, England would enter the arms and colonial race with the great powers of the time, Spain and France. Another important fact, Henry VIII would become the first king of Ireland, leaving the country of the Celts as a vassal state. In addition, he would be the first ruler to sever ties with the Catholic Church during the Anglican Reformation in order to annul his marriage to Catherine of Aragon. And with this, the United Kingdom would switch to the Protestant side, the next step towards consolidating England as a power would be during the reign of Elizabeth Brechin, in which various conflicts would begin, mainly against its rival power, Spain such as the Religious Wars, the Eighty Years' War, the Portuguese Succession War and the Anglo-Spanish Wars. Here stand out the expeditions and military leadership of the remembered Francis Drake, a privateer for the English and a pirate for the Spanish. In addition, the first settlements would be established on the American continent. Roanoke in North Carolina and Gilbert in Newfoundland, Canada, although both were very ephemeral. Another important event was the founding of the British East India Company, through which trade with the states of present-day India would be monopolized. But the beginnings of the British Empire as such would occur during the 17th century with the British colonization of America, in which after various battles with their main rivals, Spain, France and the Netherlands, established various colonies. The first of these, Jamestown in present-day Virginia, which would be the starting point from where, after alliances with some American Indian states to defeat others, the establishment of the 13 colonies would be achieved from 1624. Likewise, in present-day Canada, Amid various conflicts with France, the founding of Rupert's Land and Newfoundland would be achieved. For its part, Spain would cede Jamaica and the Cayman Islands in 1670, after the Anglo-Spanish War, and in which a truce would be achieved with the Treaty of Madrid. And speaking of the Caribbean, England had already managed to colonize the Commonwealth of the Bahamas and Barbados. The new colonies in America would boost the British economy thanks to the extraction of various resources, which, in the first instance, were obtained by British immigrants to the new world known as unpaid workers, since instead of receiving wages, they received food, transportation and lodging. These workers were gradually replaced by black slaves brought from Africa, with fewer rights and easier to obtain. The 18th century would begin with the Spanish War of Succession, which was actually a civil war for the Spanish throne. But well, England would take advantage of this, as it would obtain from France some territories in Canada and the St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as Gibraltar from Spain. In addition, during this period, Scotland would go bankrupt after a failed project to colonize Panama so England would save it in exchange for political unification. With this, the United Kingdom of Great Britain was born, 
which after the War of Succession would already obtain the status of hegemonic power in Europe. The United Kingdom would also participate in the Austrian Succession War, which would escalate hostilities and tensions with France, with whom they would start new conflicts on a new front, India, where the Gallic country had also formed a company. To this conflict, known as the Carnatic Wars, the Mughal Empire would join, which dominated part of the territory of present-day India in the face of growing European influence in the region. The final outcome would occur during the Seven Years' War, in which the British managed to consolidate their hegemony in the region, in addition to annexing the area of Bangladesh. Present-day Bangladesh, after which the French would have to withdraw. And speaking of the Seven Years' War, which ended with the Treaty of Paris, it was a resounding victory for the British, in which they made acquisitions not only in India, but also in America where the province of Canada was ceded to them by France, also being expelled from North America. In addition to Dominican Republic Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean, on the other hand, would get Florida from Spain. Well, what a success, right? Although going to the 13 colonies, luck was not on the British side. In view of the British protectionism and the lack of representation in Parliament, they achieved their independence breaking away from the British yoke in 1776. With this, a future superpower, the United States of America would be born. But anyway, if American colonies are lost, then they are sought elsewhere. After the expeditions of the famous James Cook, the colonization of Australia would begin in 1788, first colonizing the eastern part, where a prison would be created for the shipment of convicts. Although over time, it would become rich thanks to the exploitation of wool and gold. Returning to North America, the United Kingdom would consolidate the colonization of Oregon with the United States, and in 1800, the unification with Ireland would be consolidated, thus giving birth to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. The end of the 18th century is marked by the French Revolution, which would lay the groundwork for the memorable Napoleonic Wars in which the United Kingdom, supported by the coalition forces, would face Napoleonic France and its allies in an attempt to maintain the old regime in Europe. Result, victory for the coalition and new territories for the United Kingdom. The strategic island of Republic of Malta from the French and Sri Lanka and the Cape Colony from the Netherlands. After the defeat of France, its main rival, the United Kingdom would rise as the only superpower, marking the beginning of the Pax Britannica period, in which the British would continue expanding their territory. Cooperative Republic of Guyana, Myanmar, Malaysia, of United Arab Emirates, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and new territories in India, dismantling the Maratha Empire. Because of the above, the suspicions of the still existing Sikh and Mughal empires and some other Indian regions would grow, but the height of the British Empire would be achieved during the reign of Queen Victoria, who would reign from the age of 18 being seen as an immature young woman with little aptitude for ruling. Victoria would marry Albert of Saxony, who would be her support during the first decades of her reign. Here some new acquisitions were made, such as Hong Kong, after defeating People's Republic of China in the Opium Wars, after which they also managed to highly influence its economy. They also managed to halt the expansionism of Russia, who was shaping up to compete during the Crimean War. In addition to expansion, the Victorian era will be remembered as the peak of the Industrial Revolution. The United Kingdom was the pioneer in achieving rapid industrialization, which mobilized thousands of people from the countryside to the city. Great inventions like the telegraph optimized communications with all the colonies and the refinement of steam navigation helped to multiply trade between them. Returning to India, where the influence of the British company had grown even more, some mutinous sepoys with support from the Mughal Empire, fed up with the recent British religious influence, as well as sending them to foreign wars such as those in Afghanistan, would start the Indian Rebellion. This revolt would be quickly suppressed, basically because there was no unified identity of India as such due to the diversity of languages and religions, 
they managed to get the support of other regions loyal to the Empire. Territorial outcome, the end of the Mughal Empire and the British East India Company passing total sovereignty to the British Crown under the name of British Raj with Victoria as the first Empress of India. Although the new Empress of India would go into mourning after the death of her husband and support, Albert, in 1861, which distanced her from politics for a while, although she would later return to become the national icon that embodied and spread British values through an empire that continued to expand. Faced with the emergence of new powers such as the United States, the recovery of France and above all a unified Germany, the Berlin Conference would be reached, where the European powers would divide the African continent as if it were a cake without even the presence of Africans. But anyway, the point is that the United Kingdom sought to unify its territories from north to south, from the recently acquired Egypt, snatched from the Ottoman Empire to Cape Colony, which in recent decades had been expanding to the north. Although this expansion began during his term, Victoria could not see it completed as she would die in 1901. Despite encountering some resistance, like the Boers and the Zulu, the British would finish the expansion of Africa by 1910, obtaining the colonization of present-day Republic of Ghana, Republic of Kenya, the Republic of the Gambia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Somalia, Republic of Zambia, Republic of Zimbabwe, Republic of Sudan, Republic of Uganda, and the subsequent unification of South Africa. Despite this peaceful expansion, Europe had fallen into a game of alliances where tensions grew until after the assassination of the Archduke of Ostrohumo in Sarajevo, the First World War would break out. On the side of the Allies, the United Kingdom achieves the surrender of Germany and the Ottoman Empire. From the first, it would obtain its colonies in Africa Togo, Republic of Cameroon and United Republic of Tanzania. The Republic of Namibia and German New Guinea would pass under the sovereignty of its colonies South Africa and Australia respectively. Of the second, after the Sykes-Picot Treaty, the United Kingdom would obtain Jordan Mesopotamia, current Iraq and Palestine. A few years later, he would obtain the Sultanate of Oman in 1920. And with this, the empire would reach its maximum expansion. Although, spoiler, this would be very ephemeral because of the incalculable costs of the war. It would leave a country with little resources to maintain such an extensive empire. During the interwar period, the United Kingdom would start to lose territories. Ireland would separate after a revolt that started from the First World War. Canada and Australia would do it peacefully since the adoption of the Statute of Westminster. Other countries like Egypt and South Africa would gradually gain autonomy. In addition to this, the United Kingdom would be one of the most affected countries during the 1929 crash. How can an empire like this be maintained? New misfortunes of the empire would begin after the outbreak of the World War II, where the United Kingdom would again participate on the side of the Allies. But we won the war and were the only Europeans to resist the German invasion. Yes, but the economic and human losses left the United Kingdom in a precarious situation that urgently needed the help of the United States and its Marshall Plan to survive. The first to take advantage of this situation would be the British Raj, who would gain its independence in 1947 and which would eventually, after a war, be divided into three states. India, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, Bangladesh. The decline of the British Empire was becoming increasingly imminent, and gradually the colonies were going, independent until 1997, where Hong Kong would return to People's Republic of China and leaving only some islands in the Caribbean to this day, Oceania and the Atlantic. However, to this day, many of its former colonies still maintain a link with the United Kingdom since the creation of the Commonwealth of Nations in 1950, and all these countries are currently part of it. Even some still honorably recognize Elizabeth II as head of state. It seems like a happy ending, doesn't it? Anyway. No matter how much opinions on this great empire vary from a civilizing power to an authoritarian and imperialist state, 
The truth is that its influence has greatly shaped the current geopolitical configuration of the world. Don't you believe me? I hope you do when you have to use English to communicate anywhere in the world. What do you think? Don't forget to leave your comment. And if you liked this video, please support me with a like and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.